Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to be looking at how to properly sign and certify a file and how to send it to somebody and allow them to see who signed the file and with what credentials. These credentials are called a digital ID certificate. So this is my regular floor plan, and I could just sign it now. And let me show you what happens when you sign it without a digital ID certificate. Initially, on your end, everything will seem normal. So this is now a second file that I've already signed. If I go to my signatures area, everything looks great. And I can also double check by going to the Tools dropdown, Signature, and clicking on Validate Signatures. This looks for a digital ID certificate. Everything here seems normal. And that's because I created my digital ID on this PC. And on this version of Blooming Review, it's actually found under the Tools dropdown, Signature, and Trusted Identities. We can see here that I have three people, myself, myself once again, and a colleague of mine. And because of this, every time he sends me a file, I have his digital ID saved on my version of Bluebeam Review. But if somebody sends me a signed and certified document and I don't have this in my trusted identities, then I'm going to get this error. The signer's identity will be unknown. This is now a floor plan that's been signed by one of my other colleagues, Alan, and because he didn't attach his digital ID certificate, I don't know exactly who he is because I don't have all that info. It does have information on the signature, but some municipalities will not accept this kind of a certification or signature. And you can tell by the color that the yellow means that there's something missing. So let's do it the right way. The right way, for example, is this document here. And what I've done is I've actually attached the .cer file, the digital ID certificate, right here on my drawing. So let's do it now. What I did was I went to a document that of course was not signed so I can basically make uh, more signatures and put more things on it and I went to the tools drop down and I went to file attachment. I can then select a file and I can place it on my drawing. So for example let me just select um, one of my floor plans here or even one of my little essentials syllabuses. There we go. So now my cursor is ready to place it, and I can just go anywhere on my document and just click once. And now I have this little paperclip icon. I can click in my properties area, and I can see that the icon can be changed into a graph, into the file icon itself, so I can see that it's a PDF, and into different kinds of images, for example. So I've actually already attached my essential syllabus right here with this little pin icon. Let me get rid of this one. Right click and delete, and I can click on this one, and I can see that this icon represents my syllabus. It actually has the exact size of the syllabus. And I can extract it, and I can either open or save my syllabus. So now I can look at my syllabus. So this is how we attach files to PDFs without having them part of our thumbnails area and having them part of our different sheets. And it's a really lightweight, small, nice way to put files onto a PDF. So I did the same thing with my .cer file. How did I get the CER file to begin with, though? So what we have to do is we have to go to the Tools dropdown, Signature, and we have to go to Digital IDs. Then we can see all the IDs that were created on this PC. So Trusted Identities shows other people's IDs alongside yours, but here I have both of mine. So we're going to use my official one. This one is a personal one. And we're just going to click on Export. So we click on it once and click on Export. Before we do that, we can also see properties about these digital IDs. To see the properties, you'll have to log in. So I'm not going to do that now because that information is proprietary. <laughs> so I can click on this and I can click on export. It's now asking me for my password once again to export, which is completely fine. This ensures that nobody can really take your ID and mess around with it. And just so you know, even if people have your ID, they cannot see your password. They can't see any important info. Well, looks like I didn't put in my password correctly. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So now I can save this. This is a .cer file. If you try to save this file or send it over email, it's actually going to be locked and you won't even be able to download it on the receiving end. So this file needs to be attached by basically going once again to the Tools dropdown and File Attachment. So let's do that. Just so you know, let me show you where my file is. Here it is. This is what it looks like. It is a security certificate file. It's not very big. It just has some simple information that allows people to see who signed the file and on what PC they signed it on. So it's some good info. So 
I've already attached mine right here. If I want to, I can also extract it. All that's going to do is it's just going to open some information about my ID so I can see when I created it. So it's valid for about 10 years. And that's basically it. So I can see all kinds of info there, but nothing is here is uh, going to be proprietary, so you don't have to worry. You can give these to people and not worry about them stealing your information. So now my .cr file is on my file. So now let's sign this file and see what happens. So I can click on the sign area. Everything here is as is. You can see another tutorial of ours to see how to sign properly. What I like to do is I like to do document certification and allow no changes. Sometimes if there are forms or other signature fields and I want other people to sign my document, I can allow them to do so by checking on this one. But let's just do no changes. Everything in appearance looks pretty good. So we're going to click on OK and OK. Let's save our file, underscore sign, underscore test. Why not? You don't want to save a signed document as the exact same name as your previous one. If you save it in the same location, you might overwrite it. So let's click on Save. And now the new document opens and everything is looking good. Let's go to our signatures area. The document certification seems to be invalid, but let's test that by going to signature and validate. Excellent. Now it's updated. The document is certified and everything is looking good. So if you ever see an error, make sure that you go and you validate your signatures first before making any conclusions. So now our file is correct. And if I send this to someone, because the .cr file is on the file, they can use it. Now, how do you actually import the .cr file into the trusted identities area? Let's go back there. Now we have to open a file that has not been signed. So this one has been, so we're going to close it. Let's go back to our file access area. Let's open our floor plan once again. There we go. And let's go to our tools dropdown, signature, and let's go to trusted identities. So here we can begin to add more trusted identities. So if I didn't have my own identity, <laughs> of course, that would be kind of odd. <laughs> I would click on add trusted identity right here and I can find a .cr file and bring it in. So I can bring in anybody else's .cr file, and that way they don't have to give me their .cr file every time they sign. But the first time, they definitely should attach it to one of their PDFs, and that way I can use it. Also, of course, I can extract this file, and I can basically uh, save it to my PC, and I can have it ready to go. And that is how you can properly send a signed and certified document to someone and allow it all to be certified properly. Once again, my name is Ari. I'm a Bluebeam certified instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. We've got plenty more on our blog. And until then, I hope you have a great rest of your day.